Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub, and today we will try to understand why RST of response ratio should be evaluated during a linearity study. Especially if you look into the ICH guideline for validation, that is Q2R1, these four parameters are recommended to be evaluated to confirm the linearity of the testing procedure. The first one correlation coefficient, the second one y-intercept, third is slope and this fourth one is residual sum of squares. Now the correlation coefficient y-intercept and slope can be calculated very easily, many people know that, but uh, residual sum of squares sometimes people do not know. So for that reason, I will also explain how one can calculate the residual sum of squares, how to calculate the response ratio, and finally, we will also try to conclude why response ratio is also equally important as estimation parameter for the linearity. Let us understand the residual sum of squares now. So this could be your regression line and this is the these are the five different observations A, B, C, D and E. But does your all observations are as expected? No. So the observation number B has a deviation of four from its expected observation or the measurement. So point B is four above the line and hence that is called as the residual. So this vertical distance is known as the residual. Residual means what? You have expected response but uh, during your linearity study your response got slightly deviated from your expected response and that is nothing but the residual. Same is the case for point C where your residual is now minus 2 as it is below the uh, expectation. So residual is equal to observed value minus predicted value. Predicted means its ideal value based on to the regression line and how one can now understand the predicted value. So it can be calculated by using this uh, equation y is equal to mx plus c and where y is your predicted value. So residual is, is going to become now the observed value minus predicted value. But as per this equation, our predicted value is mx plus c. So I just substituted and we got the new equation for the residuals now. So this is the calculation formula for response ratio. Response ratio can be calculated as ratio of response and the concentration. Let us uh, visit Excel sheet and we will try to understand the calculation of uh, sum of residual squares and response ratio. So here is the example for understanding the calculation of residuals and then residual sum of square. So this is our linear linearity levels ranging from L1 to L5. These are the respective concentration 10.1 ppm to 50.5 ppm. And these are the respective responses or areas like 1000 for L1 and 5000 for L5. So I calculated the residuals by using the calculation formula. You can see highlighted into the LO region. So minus 10.9 is the residual for L1 level. Minus 16.5 is the residuals for L2 and so and so forth. The problem with the residuals, you know what? The sum of residuals is always equal to zero. So will I be able to conclude anything by calculating the sum of residuals? Because all the time, the sum of residuals is going to be equal to just zero. And it is going to be a very meaningless to understand the linearity performance. So it has been suggested to conduct the estimation of uh, residual sum of squares means first we need to calculate the square of these residuals like uh, the square of minus 10.9 is 118.7 the square of minus 16.5 is 270.7 and so on and so forth so the first the, the square of all residuals is calculated and then the summation of this uh, squares of residual is estimated and found to be 8408.2 and this summation is never going to be equal to zero as like in the case of sum of the residuals. I hope you understand why the residual sum of square is calculated and not only the sum of residuals. Let us now understand the, the next parameter which is slope needs to be 
reported, y intercept also needs to be reported, and there is a limit for correlation coefficient like 0.999 in case of assay, or maybe 0.997 in case of related substances according to your in house SOP. So there is a meaning in calculating the uh, correlation coefficient. Now I am going to talk about a response ratio. Now this is the parameter which is not mentioned into the ICH guideline, but I personally felt that this parameter is very important and one can really consider this parameter to establish the linearity. So how the response ratio is calculated? So response ratio is nothing but the ratio of response divided by your concentration. So in this case, let us say, if I want to calculate the response ratio of L1, if I want to calculate the response ratio of L1, how I can do that? Okay, let me also insert the linearity level source here. So for L1, the response ratio is now 99.0. For L2, it is 99.3 and so and so forth. So finally, I calculated the mean that is 99.9 .9, and I have calculated the percent average which is found to be 1.1%. Now, what is the importance of this RST value? See, these are all the observations for the response ratios across the five linearity levels. And you can also relate this response ratio with your precision. And that's where I think the percent RST that you applied for the precision can also be considered for the RST of response ratio. Now, why it is important? Let us understand. If I just manipulate this value to 5,500 and assume it is the linearity for assay. And let us say your limit of correlation coefficient is uh, not more than 0.999. In that case, you understand, oh, my correlation coefficient is out of limit. So method is found to be non-linear. And let us say your percent RSD limit for this particular method is not more than 2%. Isn't it? So now both these uh, values are out of the acceptance criteria. Correlation coefficient is also out of the acceptance criteria and same is the case for RST2. Let us come back to a lower value like 5400 and now still your correlation coefficient is out of acceptable limit, isn't it? And same is the case for even percent RST also. Let us go back to the 5300 now. Now in this case, uh, you got the correlation coefficient 0.9994 means it is meeting the specific your acceptance criteria however your percent RST is little higher to 0.2 percent so that way sometimes the response ratio may be a stringent parameter as compared to correlation coefficient now there could be reason that we have considered only five linearity levels over here however in precision study you have conducted the six measurements but it's a good idea to also consider response ratio as the as an additional parameter to make sure that your method meets the linearity requirement thank you so much